for seconds in a day, please write a program which asks the user for a number of days. The program then prints out the number of seconds in the amount of given days. The program should function as follows. How many days? One. Seconds in many days. Another example, seven. This should be pretty straightforward. The first ones are pretty easy. And they teach you something new. 24, 60, and 60. Copy the code. Let's paste it in here. Test it. It's done it. Okay, so this program asks the user for three numbers. The program then prints out the product. That is, the numbers multiplied by each other. Yeah. There is, however, something wrong with the program. It doesn't work quite right. As you can see, if you run it, please fix it. It's the code. Let's see. There is an issue with the code because the same variable number is being used to store number values. So you need to have one, two, and three. It needs to be three different inputs. It's done it. One, two, and three. There you go. It's got a pass. All right, there we go. Sum and product. Please write a program which asks the user for two numbers. The program will then print out the sum and the product of two numbers. The product should function as follows. So the sum of the numbers, and then it's going to times it. So three times seven. So three plus seven, then three times seven. You've got number one variable, number two variable. All right. Let's see. So number one, yep, yeah, number two. There should be addition, sum of the numbers, and the product of the numbers. Perfect. Let's copy that, paste it, test it, done. Sum and mean. So pretty much the same as the last one. If you run it. Okay, number one. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So the sum of the numbers is 100 and the mean is 25. Let's reset this. So it's from scratch. All right, so we've got the sum of the numbers, correct? And then we've got the mean of the numbers and we're gonna print out. Test it, perfect. Okay, food expenditure. Please write a program which estimates a user's typical food expenditure. The program should ask the user how many times a week they eat at the student cafeteria. It's still going on, ChatGPT, okay. <laughs> then he asks for the price of a typical student lunch, right? So how many times a week? The price of a typical lunch and four money spent on groceries during the week. Based on the information, the program calculates the user's typical food expenditure both weekly and daily. The program should function as follows. They ask you how many times do you eat at the student cafeteria? Four. The price of a typical student lunch? One five euros and how much money do you spend on groceries in a week so 28.5 so this is what i've come up with times a week that they eat the lunch cost the groceries they cost is times a week divided by seven times lunch cost, lunch cost plus groceries divided by seven right so on and so on and then it prints out as it wants it with the euros text after so daily day cost euros average food expenditure so we'll paste that in there and let's have a look at Helsinki solution. Way more elegant than my one. <laughs> it looks like here, you've got daily equals round. It's rounding up daily expenditure. It's rounding up daily weekly expenditure here. And then you've got weekly expenditure and daily expenditure. So it's calculating two different things and doing two different things. It's pretty much what I did. Because I like Helsinki, they have just one calculation and they divide it down here but either way works yeah perfect please write a program which asks for the numbers of students on a course and the desired group the program should then print out the number of groups formed from the students on the course if the division is not even one of the groups may have fewer numbers than specified if you can't get your code working as expected it is absolutely okay to move on and come back to this exercise later the topic on the of the next section is conditional statements so what is a conditional statement if this is this then that so on and so on right if this then that if this if the number is less then print this if the number is greater print that. that's conditional statements so let's close that so it says you can move on the conditional statements this exercise can also be solved using a conditional construction units in group please write a program let's copy let's paste it let's see what it comes out with all right so number students group size if number student uh, modulus group size doesn't equal uh, zero number groups plus one uh, lever so it's pretty much doing what the solution here is that it, it did minus one and it's going to do plus one to the groups let's see yep perfect 
So all well, please write a program which asks the user for an integer number. The program should print out all well if the number is exactly 1984 and otherwise do nothing. Type a number. If the number is equal to 1984, type all well, it's, it's so straightforward, so easy. Yep, the one is exactly that. Test it, excellent. Okay, so absolute value. Please write a program which asks the user for an integer number. If the number is less than zero, the program should print out the number multiplied by minus one. Otherwise, the program prints out the number as is. Please have a look at the examples of expected behavior below. So if you type in minus seven, the absolute value of this number is seven. Please type in a number, one. The absolute value of this number is one. 99, absolute value of this number is 99. So there's the code there. Let's see, come up with a solution. They've got absolute num equals num times minus one, right? So that's that. Yep, if it's less, you times it. Otherwise, this equals what it is. So I've got a redundant, I've got a redundant code here. I should have just done if it equals, if anything else, then it just is what it is, right? So let's test it, perfect. Okay, so soup or no soup? Please write a program which asks for the user's name. If the name is anything but Jerry, the program then asks for the number of portions and prints out the total cost. The price of a single portion is 590. Two examples, right? Let's print this out and see what it comes up with. So their solution, let's copy it, paste it, test it. Perfect. Order of magnitude. Please write a program which asks the user for an integer number. The program should then print out the magnitude of the number according to the following examples. 950, the number is smaller than 1000. 59, number is smaller than 1000, is smaller than 100. 2 is smaller than 1110. It's got the code here, it's perfect, test it. Nope, it's not perfect. More like, oh right, okay, okay. It needs to have it, it needs to have it as it goes, so it needs this, even if it's less than 10. And not just that, it's less than 10. Hopefully ChatGPT understands this. You can provide me with the code you wrote so that I can try to identify the issue. Dude, it's the code that you gave me. The code looks correct to me. It asks the user to input a number. It checks if it's smaller than... Okay. Prints out the appropriate message. It's copy and paste. So we're just going in a loop. So we'll help ChatGPT, right? It gave it a nudge. It still couldn't do it. It's got thank you on every single one. It just had a, so it had an issue understanding what we want from it. Here is a sample output for magnitude of 1000. Chat GPT has a sample output of 10. It has a sample output from, for any other number that is greater than 1000. Chat GPT, they all say, Thank you. Okay. Um, they all say thank you. So they all say thank you. I think we've explained it in enough detail, right? <laughs> oh man. I think I've over explained it. No, it's done it. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my over explanation has done it. Bloody hell, mate. Let's copy this, paste it in. Please write a program which asks the user for two numbers and an operation. The operation is add, multiply, or subtract. The program should calculate and print out the result of the operation with the given numbers. If the user types in anything else, the program should print out nothing. Examples. 10 and 17 add 10 add 17 equals 27 so your printout is that 4 and 6 multiply and then it multiplies and it gives you that 4 and 6 subtract it gives you that any of anything else it does nothing so this is what i've come up with right so let's see what they've done let's reset it does it give us any hint no from scratch test with inputs 1, 2, add, your program should have printed out 1 plus 2 equals 3. Your program printed out 1 plus 2 equals 3. So it's looking for, I think, integers. Let's do cancel. Yeah, I didn't do flop, I did integers. Okay, so 
added integers and it's doing float. And when you run their code, it prints out 1 plus 2.0 plus 3.0, right? You shouldn't use flow. In here, it didn't specify to use integers. Program printed out the result with decimal points, yep, which caused the test to fail. To fix the issue, you can use string formatting to remove the decimal points from the result. Okay, fair enough. So integer result, int result, int. So let's test it. Uh, it's, this is not going to be a painful. Okay, this might not be painful because I can just write up and use integer, not float. Um, so use int instead of float. So this was just, I could have said to it that when it prints a result for num1 and num2, print it as an integer like put int here and here but we copy this code now it passes it straight away so Helsinki didn't say use flow or integer but they expect you to not have it so they just want you to show it as it is so this isn't a flow this is an integer phone number without a decimal point 